God that you woke us up this morning and, and gave us an opportunity to fellowship one with the other. Thank you for how you brought us yet with a mind freed on Jesus. We look to you now. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are God, our strength, and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. God bless you. I hope you be seated. Thank you, friends. Uh, everything is good. Good. Musicians as well. Praise and worship. Amen. May God bless our dancers. Amen. Small, you could the father could put his wedding band around. Amen. It's amazing how God will take. Amen. There we go. God bless you. First of all, we thank God for each and every one of our our crew, our breakfast crew. There we go. God, there's there's the brothers. God love you, man. Thank you for coming. Each and every one of y'all, we had an excellent time, and we do have a slide presentation uh, after after we finish, just to show you some of the things the kids did. We were so glad to get there and get back. Oh, God, that was a long trip. Uh, we something else, and we'll get to it. I'm at that age now that I can just forget it and just don't remember it like I used to. But we got some things we want to share. Amen, out of the word. We are just blessed. I have some things here that, that really blessed me, and I was kind of surprised when I was doing my lesson, and I, I was, of course, now I'm doing some unique stuff. But uh, before we get started, I want to use for the subject, so you can write this down, how to take care of your heart. How to take care of your heart. I want to give you a few statistics here. About 610,000 people die every year with a heart attack. 610,000. It's not in cancer, whatever, but 6,010 people die from heart attack. I, uh, if you ever had a catheter, anybody ever had a catheterization done? I had one done back in Peter, and that's no joke. Amen. Stents put in and what have you. But I also want to give you some statistics here also. It's amazing, praise God, that uh, America have a tendency of fattening you up so they can take your money. Here's what we got. $33 billion is spent on sports equipment. $33 billion spent on sports equipment. I have a treadmill in the shed that I haven't taken out in about seven years. I guess it's doing real well in the shed. <laughs> Anybody ever bought sports equipment and got it somewhere hid away right now? Yeah, ab machines. They show you that picture of people with the muscles and real life guys in there, the bike, the whole nine yards. And we do it, praise God. Also, $19 billion is spent on health clubs. $19 billion is spent on health. Anybody belong to a health club? $19 billion is spent on health clubs. There's 36,108 health clubs in our country. Uh, 36,108. I thought it was more than that, but also, <laughs> and this really blew my mind, $100 billion is spent on sports activities. That's why those jokers can wear and you can get the money they get. $100 billion is spent on sports. And I also had to throw this in. Uh, $50 billion is raised by the church every year. So we're, we're not doing that well, but $100 billion would have been real good. I want to talk about the heart. In the book of Proverbs, if you would, turn to four Proverbs, the fourth proverb, uh, 23. And we're going to do a little walking here. Uh, Proverbs 23. But uh, matter of fact, uh, while you're doing that, just mark that crystal if you will. Talk Proverbs 23. Go to Luke 10. I want to do that first. That's the one I had taught. Luke 10. Luke 10. Here's how it reads. 
Luke 10 and 42 to be exact. Luke 10 and 42. Luke 10 and 42. And what it was, Jesus was doing some teaching. And uh, Martha was in the kitchen getting stuff together. And I'm going to go up. Matter of fact, let me do this here. Now, in the 38th verse, now it came to pass as they went, they entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received uh, Jesus into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and says, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Jesus answered and said unto Martha, 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 thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall, be, shall not be taken from her. I wanted to read that primarily because of how much we attempt to take care of the physical man. Physical man is very important, and I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. Uh, after six surgeries, you know it's important to me. Uh, but the thing of it is, even with my six sur surgeries, I'm still going to die. Uh, I got about three transplants. Implants, not transplants, implants. Thank God I don't have transplants. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, I didn't get the transplant. I just got the implant. But any way you look at it, it's still a plant. I mean, we're, right now they can, they can transplant, implant stuff, a heart, lung. I don't know if they got the lungs yet, but kidneys and what have you. They can transplant just about every part, eyes, face. I know an individual got a transplanted face, hands, arms, whatever. Uh, like I said, I stand here with two implants, three, I don't know. They go in there and I don't know what they do, but I'm still going to die. They can plant me. And one day I will be planted for the last time. <laughs> That's the last plant. But then Jesus is going to come and get me up. So I'm good to go. The plan is okay, knowing that I'm going to get up. I like it when Jesus said, uh, he said, except a, corner, a kernel of corn die, glory to God, and rise. And this is so important. But I want to talk about the heart. I want to just do a few things right quick before I go there. I want to talk about us as men, women. God, man is made up of a physical material. You've got to also understand, praise God, that our bodies that uh, we have is just a lot of minerals. Iron, phosphorus. Matter of fact, when they burn you down, you're worth about $9 now. And, and actual minerals, about 9 bucks. If I was to buy you as the ore that you are. And it's amazing because a lot of times people say, I don't want to be cremated. Uh, and, and we as, as folk, we don't like the cremation. But let me tell you something. When it's all over said and done, you're going right back to the dust. So it's really, and God can put you back together no matter what you look like. But, but he is also made of in, in material aspects, which is intangible. This includes the soul the spirit, the intellect, the will, the emotions, the conscience, and so forth. These material, not immaterial characteristics exist beyond physical lifespan of the human body, and they are eternal. The inside, the real you, is not going to die. It'll leave. Matter of fact, glory to God, when you give up this earth suit, the soul and the spirit's going to go back to wherever it's going to go. The immaterial aspects, the spirit, soul, and heart, conscience, mind, and emotions make up the whole personality. The Bible makes it clear that the soul, get it here, there we go, and the spirit are the primary immaterial aspect of humanity, while the Bible is physical, the physical container that holds them on the earth. That's why, uh, and I used to be really heartbroken when I see 
you know, deformities and what have you. It's bad. The, the earth suit is just a container. All it's doing is holding the real you, the real you. That's why when people are talking and laughing at individuals and, you know, and I did it uh, back in when I was ignorant, um, you, realize, you don't realize that the real man, the real person is inside the earth suit. The body, which is the soma, it is the entire material and physical structure of the human body, and it is the physical part of a person. And the only reason God gave you this body, well, the only reason, is to contain your spirit man. But it also connects you with the material world. I'm going to go and talk about the soul. I'm trying to, I'm going to get to where I want to go. And Genesis 2, 7 states, man was created as a living soul. The soul consists of the mind, which includes the conscience, the will, the emotions. The soul and the spirit are mysteriously tied together to make up the scripture called the heart. For years, for years, I said, man, the heart. And when you, when you think of the heart, how many have ever had a broken heart? Anybody ever had the heart broken? Matter of fact, you got to watch breaking people's hearts now. They'll kill you. People take it pretty serious now. Don't mess with the heart. Okay, the, the living soul, the soul consists of the mind, I've read that, which, which is mysteriously tied. So really, this is kind of crazy, but it's very important because, believe it or not, this is how you function. You know, when you, uh, I remember when I got saved and I came up and my, my, my body did not want to react. My, one thing about the body, since it is your earth suit, it takes, uh, it, the soulless man, man takes a beating from the body because the body don't like to be embarrassed. The body don't like attention sometimes, but then a lot of times it does. We try to baby it up. I, I, I have to laugh. I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, my God, you don't look like that brother that graduated in 1969. I look at God knows. I look so much like my dad. It scared me because I looked at his picture, and I said, "My God, I'm looking just like him." <laughs> the writer in Proverbs declare, "Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life." Proverbs 4.23, we see here that the heart is the central end of our emotions and will. This is kind of deep because I shared with y'all that the soul is the, the soul consists of the emotions, will, and intellect. So here's what's kind of ironic. I don't want to bless you because this blessed me real good. You know when you first get saved, anybody first get saved? All those saved, raise your hand. When I first got saved, believe it or not, I mentally assented, which means I mentally assented this. Here's how I did it. I recognized God. It takes your intellect to recognize God. I, God. Because before, I really didn't, re I knew he was God, but I didn't recognize him as God. Kind of, who knows, what I, I respected him to a level, but because I grew up in the Catholic Church, they helped me respect him a lot. Uh, but I, I did not fully go into the depths of God. I'm going to talk about that. We're going to, we're going to work just a little bit. Now, the writer of Proverbs, watch over your heart. Okay, diligence. We see here that the heart is the central of our emotions and will. Now look at this here. But a natural psyche or soulless man, the natural man, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. It wasn't until I got serious about God that I really started recognizing the spiritual appraisal of God. How many know what I'm talking about? Before, I did not think about healing. I did not think about going to God. As a matter of fact, as a Catholic, I went to a lot of saints. I had a saint that if you lost something, you prayed to. and You had a saint that if you did this, you prayed to. But th that was because of tradition and emotional things that I was taught. It wasn't until I really start, left my mental assenting, which is my soul, 
and, my, and that part became part of my spiritual man. We're going to talk about that, the heart of the man. Man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. It's amazing that as, as, uh, as born-again folk, praise God, we think that people that are not born-again should know. They don't know. A person that is not born again to, or to, is not to the place of, of, uh, of the soulless man connecting with the spiritual man does not know. I, I, how many was there? I did. Matter of fact, I, I told, I was just like Curtis Mayfield. If there's a hell below, we all going to go. I also thought that I was going to have a lot of friends in hell because I really didn't care. Matter of fact, I was going to go to purgatory. I wasn't going to hell. I wasn't that bad. I wasn't bad enough to go to hell. I was just a purgatory level man. Amen. Amen. I've heard a lot of people say this, you know, I'm good. How many of you have heard people say, I'm good? I'm good. I'm good. You're not that good. Matter of fact, ain't none of us in here that good. Nobody in here that I'm looking at now with my good eyes, none of y'all are that good. None, nobody here is that good. None of us is good enough to go to heaven. Naturally. You're not good. You're not that good. Now look at this here. Paul looked he intently. Okay, let me go up. Okay. Man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness going on. Paul looked intently at the councils, said, Brethren, I have lived my life with a perfect good conscience before God up until this day. And he was talking Glory to God, when he's talking to, uh, uh, I'm, think, I'm trying to think, uh, Aquila, and not Aquila, but he was being tried. And Paul was saying, I have came to a place that I'm, I'm, I've adjusted my conscience that I can see the things of God. Now I want to go on, the spirit of a man, the pneuma. There's a part of us in your psyche that is, the only thing that can connect to God, not your soulless man, it's your spirit man. For God is a spirit. And he that worship him do what? Must do what? Worship him in spirit and in truth. The only way you can connect to God is God connects to your spirit man. Now I'm going to read this. This is, this is where I'm coming from. What does it mean to guard your heart? And I'm here to let you know, church, this is the most important part. And here's what, what we do. In Proverbs 4, 23, 26, instructs believers, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And then it goes on, keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt, corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. I, I, I'm going to share this because this, I was last night when I was going through this lesson. Do you know how much we are attacked by just the life that we're trying to live financially, our physical state? So you're trying to concentrate. Uh, and when you try to concentrate on God, you got so much opposition that is just crazy. And that's because we're trying to survive when in actuality God has already made a survival plan. I, I know this to be a fact because I continuously try to survive, trying to make more money. I'm trying to do more. I'm trying to accomplish more. When in actuality, I, I was thinking of a good friend, and he, he it doesn't matter how much you, it does matter. But when, it, when you leave here, what you've done leaves with you for the most part. We honor you. I remember when I was just, Three weeks ago, I was at an award ceremony, and they were awarding different ones. And some of us that were still alive got, got it in hand. Those that was not alive, the family came up. And basically, when, within a matter, I, I'm sitting here thinking, I, I was thinking about my dad. And my dad accomplished a lot, I thought. But right now, he's gone. I think about him every now and then, but in actuality, he had to think about the most important part. That was up to him to say, I got to make sure the most important part, you're not going to take your truck, you're not taking your car, your house, you ain't taking nothing with you. That's amazing that, <laughs> that you do all this and you leave it here. 
That's why I, I tell folk, if you got a lot of money, don't leave, don't leave it. Spend it. I got a bumper sticker. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go get it. I'm spending my kids' inheritance. No, I'm, no, I'm giving them the stuff. But I, no, I, I don't plan, literally. You know, I say, I'm just, you know, I've, what I've done, I've done. If you're going to do for your kids, do it. If you got something to give me, give it to me. Amen. Don't put it in the coffin and take it out later. I was, at, I was at this one funeral, and the brother shared with me, this guy uh, was at a funeral. They said he was going to put a 40 in the coffin. I said, that's amazing. I, watch, I like to see him drink it when they put him in the box. When you leave here, you're leaving with nothing. Job could have not have said, naked I came in, naked I'm going out. So it, it behooves me now. I, I'm an investor. I'm an investor. I invested back in the day. Thank God that I was able to do that. But the most important investment is, first of all, I'm going to share something with y'all, church. I've learned over 40, um, I'll be 45 years saved in July. I like peace. I, I, li I don't like worrying, anxiety, stress. And after this phase of game, I, I have begun to learn, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Matter of fact, when a person wants to take you there, tell them, go by yourself. Because I'm not going. No, I've learned to settle it out, man. No. My heart is important to me. I'm not talking just this fleshly heart. I'm talking about my peace of mind. This one young lady, she started talking about a person. I mean, she is having. I said, oh, I don't know him. No, this is just how I told her. I don't know him. So don't give me what you feel because I don't feel it. Don't let folk give you stuff because now you done dumped something else on you. And your heart can't take it. Seriously. I want to talk a little bit. Yeah, as a matter of fact, while I'm on that, that's why I don't want to tell you, don't take your children's problems. Kids have a tendency of giving you their dumb stuff. No, let them figure it out in a little bit. I mean, help, I ain't not saying don't help them, but don't take it. Here's what happens, and I want to show, because I'm going to go on. People knows people of responsibility. A responsible person don't know how to let it go. Amen. I'd be a responsible person. If I get in it, I, I'm the kind of person I want to see it to the end. And, and then the person whose problem it, is, problem it is get in the back seat. So now I'm driving their car. I don't want to drive your car. I didn't even want to get in it. So now they got you driving, putting the gas in it, getting all the repairs. I'm, I'm not talking physical car. I'm talking about that junk. Oh, y'all don't, yeah, 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 yeah. And what it does when you get in, it's not like you don't care, but I don't care to the point that it's going to drive me crazy. Because you ain't crazy now. You laid back. Oh, God help me. Then you're going to make the same mistake and expect me to drive two cars. Guard your heart. How to take care of your heart. I'll talk a little bit about taking care of your heart. Okay. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got to read this because it's here in the lesson. Give careful thought to the path of your feet. I've read that. Okay. The Bible tells us that our thoughts often dictate who we become. I want to share something with you. <clears throat> you have to really. Uh, seriously, church, y'all listen to this. In order to sin, you got to think about it. You don't just sin arbitrarily and sin. No, you got to, first of all, ex a, a primary example. When I shoplift, I knew I was going to shoplift. I went in. I thought about it. Here's what I did. I thought about how I was going to get away. Okay. When I took the item... And I attempted to get away. I never thought I was going to get caught. Because if I thought I was going to get caught, I wouldn't have took the item. But 
I took the item. I got away, but the partner didn't get away. They caught him at the door, and I looked back. Now, I had to think again, do I want to help him? Do I want to help him? No, I don't. Normally, when you're doing wrong, it ain't like you really want to help, especially when you done got away. Uh, this was deep. Now, I done got away. I had the item. I'm now thinking, how do I cover this thing? I took the item off. Now, this is kind of ridiculous. This is how stupid you can get. I took the item off and was taking it back in the store. You don't take an item back in the store unless you got a receipt, unless you want to take the money back. But they, and, and then, now, here's the other thing, too, church. 99.9% of the people that, that you do a crime with, they'll rat you out. He was in there singing like a canary. He was with me. I, and now I'm going to lie, too. No, I wasn't. I never knew the man. <laughs> I never knew him. And here's what James, James puts it so clear. As a matter of fact, I got it here. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to go there. J yes, James. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that downrange. Okay. Just as... Just as many diseases and disorders that can affect the physical heart, there are many ailments of spiritual heart, spiritual of the ailments of the spiritual heart that can impair growth and development as a believer. And my sister and Stacy Gate helped me with this word, artho atherosclerosis. In another word, it's the hardening of the arteries due to accumulated cholesterol, plaque, and scarring of the artery walls. Hardening of the spiritual heart can also occur. Hardening of the heart occurs when we are presented with God's truth and we refuse to acknowledge or accept it. That's what Pharaoh did. Moses came in and said, God said, let my people go. The first thing Pharaoh said, who is your God? I, I remember when I got saved. Man, I got saved. I, I, was, a, I was a terror. I was a, I, like I told you all, when I hook into something and I really think it's the truth, I ride it, man. That's why I was a good recruiter. I, wasn't a, I was a good recruiter because I believed in the Air Force. I could sell it. If it's something I believe in, I can sell it. Uh, how many know? <laughs> you know me. I, if I believe in it and it works for me, I'm going to share it. Well, the, I, the Bible was working for me. I told you all we had got, uh, they had got, yeah, I'm still holding to my story. I don't know, it was like 40 years ago, 40 some years ago. They had got caught with the drugs, even though it was my bag, and I never put my name on it so they couldn't identify. But God took hashies. I smoked, I knew it was real. I got as high as I thought it was real. God took that hashies and turned it back to regular weed. And I ain't talking about marijuana. I'm talking straw, whatever. <laughs> when that man came and gave us the book, because they were sending us 11 words, church. I wasn't happy about that. Jail scares me. It scares me. I don't, I, I, I went to a scared straight. I did. I'm not telling. I, I went to a scared straight. And I went in that thing, and they was closing them doors, and them doors said, boom, I'm like, Jesus. So I'm walking. I was a recruiter at the time, and I just went with the crew. And I'm sitting there, and they had this nice little young boy, blonde hair. I'll never forget it. And uh, this joker boy, D, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, looked like his forearms the size of your thigh. I'm not kidding you, man. That's the way it looked to me. He walked over to that young boy and want to kiss him on the lips. He said, whatever you do and keep doing, because you come here, you mine. I said to myself, oh, Jesus, I'm not, I'm not even here. 
I'm not, I'm not even, you know, man, I told him whatever you're doing, stop doing it, because you don't want to be his. No, I'm, I, no, whoa. Jail will make you pray, it make you, amen, A am I right? Don't convict me. God, help me here. No, I, I lost it for a minute. Let me go back to where I was. Oh. When you don't recognize God, what happened? God, help me. I'm, I'm about to say something here. I remember people telling me they're going to get saved when they get ready. Have you ever heard somebody say that? I'll wait till I get ready. You'll never get ready. That's a trick of the devil. He wants you to play. Play. No, you're a liar from the pits of hell. Thank God that when I heard his voice, there's a point in everybody's life. To, oh, my God, my time is up. I ain't got started. That's 20 minutes and 30 minutes. I can't stand that. No, it's good. No, it's good. Stop. What'd you say, brother? What's, what'd you say, sir? We, we ain't paying you to what now? Oh, set the clock. Okay. There's a point in your life God will call you. That's I don't care who you are. I don't care what. But the problem is hearts get hard. Hard. And, and then you can't hear. It's like I'm locked. It's like, like. Here we are sitting here, the doctor, where's Earl at? Earl, wave your hand. Earl back there, there he is, my brother Earl. And me and Earl go to the VA, and they, they did the cholesterol. They do the cholesterol thing. The older you get, you better get your stuff checked. Your, your arteries might be so tight you can't get nothing through it. And, and what he did, he gave us a statin, you know, so, you know, to get your cholesterol numbers. Take hey, my God, y'all do blood, how many of y'all do blood work? Get your stuff done, man, it's good playing. Afraid of the doctor. You better be afraid of the mortician. That was just a sidetrack. A lot of black men that went, went to their deathbed because of prostate cancer. If you had a guy to check, I got my stuff checked early. I tell my son, get it checked now. I don't care if you're 21 years old, get it checked. Get it checked. Comes with the blood. Get, get it checked. It's in the blood. But... And, and the more Pharaoh did that, and God, look, 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 okay. And uh, there are many things that can harden the heart and lead a person to deny God. And just like cholesterol block blood, just like cholesterol blocks blood flow, they keep a believer from having a free flow of God's peace and blessing derived from obedience. Guarding against a rebellious spirit and cultivating a spirit of submissive obedience to God's word, therefore, is the first step in guarding your heart. Don't just be a hearer of God's word. Do it. I know I shouldn't, but you know, I'm, hey, what's the, who came up with this thing? I'm going to set the Holy Ghost aside. I'm going to set my Holy Ghost up. But right now, I'm going to lump you up. I'm going to take the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Do you think, God, help me. We are so ignorant. That God's going to say, okay, you go ahead and sin. I'm going to wait here for you. Lump him up, kill him, whatever. And then God come back, you finish? Put God on a shelf. We are so unique. Do you, do we really understand that the God we serve can't be played like that? Uh, uh, okay. Heart murmur, an abnormal flow pattern due to faulty heart valves. I think my wife, babe, you didn't have a heart. You had a micro valve, micro valve prolapse, right? How, how many heart murmurs in here? Anybody had little baby heart murmurs? Okay. Flow pattern due to faulty heart valves. Heart valves act as doors to prevent the backflow of blood, uh, flow of blood into the heart. Spiritual heart murmur occurs when believers engage in complaining. 
gossip, dispute, contention. Believers are instructed many times to avoid grumbling, murmuring, complaining. My, how many heart murmurs have I had? Oh, God, help me. Heart murmurs. By engaging in these activities, believers shift their focus away from the plan, purpose, and past blessings of God to bring of the, to the things of the world. That's why we got to stop worrying about dumb stuff. My God, I ain't got enough money. You'll never have enough money. Have y'all come to the conclusion you'll never have enough money? Because the more money you get, the more money you want. And when you get it, you're going to spend it. You're going to spend it on dumb stuff. Millions of dollars building a house under the water. For what? You ain't a fish. We got to be very careful. And half the time, the money I have, we waste it on dumb. How much money did I spend on liquor? And the only thing I got out of it was a bad head and trouble. When I bought my stuff, my bag, I smoked it up. And when I came out of it, I was hungry. I ate a lot and laughed. It made me laugh and I was hungry. My God, I ate when I was high. I ate and laughed. Laughed and ate. Ate and laughed. I drank so much, I drank so much Robitussin, I ain't gonna catch a cold in two years. <laughs> no cold. That's one thing I will say, that Robitussin with that soda, I ain't have no colds. None. Two years. I came back to the States, I was cold free. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Think about it, think about it, think about it. How much money have we threw, thrown away on the stuff that has no God help me in this house? Woo! I drank, I drank Johnny Walker. Not a lot. I drank it though. Red and black. I'm going to tell you what you don't do. Let me tell you what you don't do. Don't mix it. Don't mix it with weed. Not the stuff I smoked. My, I was hard. I'm going to share this. I was in Vietnam. Uh, just a few of us in Vietnam. Uh, my, my good friend. Well, you was in Vietnam. Who else in Vietnam? I was in Vietnam, and, and it was Christmas Eve. And I was feeling real bad. I knew Cynthia and them was partying. No, I was kidding. <laughs> They trying to trying to make me feel good, Christmas songs, whatever. And a friend of mine said, man, he said, Simmons, how are you? I said, I feel real bad. Heart feel bad. No spiritual heart. So he said, come on, man, I'm going to make you feel better. Isn't this amazing? I'm going to make you feel better. We had a whole film. Uh, he had black, Johnny Walker black. Bam. Big old bag of weed. We rolled, we rolled J's in paper bags. We didn't have no paper. We rolled it in bag paper. Am I right? We rolled it in bag paper. We had cigars. We didn't have J's. We had a full cigar. You smoke with us. You smoked a cigar, man. Stokey. And uh, I'm smoking like crazy. I'm smoking. Because I was trying to feel better. You, you know, and this is the thing that we better understand. People do things because they want to feel better. I ain't doing this because I want to feel bad. I couldn't party until I got my head right. <laughs> It's an amazing head right. Get my head right. It wasn't right before, but now it's right. That's brilliant. You, you, you see how brilliant we are? Isn't that amazing? I'm going to get my head right. And uh, I, I, said, I said, okay, I'm smoking. And uh, all of a sudden, I, just, I wasn't feeling better. It seemed like somebody was stuffing me down a hole. Seriously. And I can hear he's talking, but here he said, 
Simmons. Simmons. I'm like, I said, man, where are you? Where, where you at, buddy? No, seriously. No, I was, I was, I was ODing, man. I was going, and, and uh, somebody might know what I'm talking about. Here's what happened. He kept talking, and I grabbed hold. This, this, I'm going to share something with y'all. Listen to this. Of his words. He would say, Simmons. I said, keep talking. And I, gra- I started, to, he said, you're going to be okay. I grabbed hold of okay. I kept, I, 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 literally, I'm not, I kept, I kept pulling on his words. And here's what I told him. Please keep talking. I told him, please keep talking. He said, you're going to be okay, man. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And I kept pulling on okay. I kept pulling on. That's why I know the word has power. Oh, glory to God. The word has power. It will hold you. I came out of that hole on his words. Matter of fact, I came out of the hole on God's word. (laughs) Yes, sir. So. But Deaconess James, you, would you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Deaconess James, no. Well, she know what I'm talking about. She said, I've been there. Pastor, I know what you're talking about. Move on. No, oh, God, you know, when you, when you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> By engaging in these activities, believers shift their focus, plans, and purpose. Okay. Instead, Christians are instructed to strive for con- contentment. In all things. I'm going to tell you right now. You ain't going to get content until you get a peace of mind. And when it doesn't matter. Oh, God help me. When you look at it and you say, it don't matter. Oh, I used to, man, God bless my heart. The devil get, get, get on me. You, I get up on the wrong side of the bed. Same side every morning, but it's the wrong side this morning. The same side every morning, but it's the wrong side this morning. And I get up and I'm just upset. Anybody ever been like just upset? Mad at the job. Good morning. I ain't no good morning. Talk about the job, talk about the pay and getting paid well. Just just mad, just mad. And don't be dry, riding and you riding slow. And I'm behind you. Oh man. The first thing I say is a woman in the car. And I'm thinking a woman driving. How many men know what I'm talking about? There's a woman driving that car. How many? Am I right, brother? It's either a woman or an old person. Well, now I'm old, so I can't say. It's either a woman or an old person. I'm hot. Just, just upset. Upset with everything. And Lord knows, bus driver, I'll run the kids over. Get out of my way. Just mad. How many? I'm, I'm telling the truth. Just mad. Don't do a Coleman and stay in the fast lane. I'll run you off the road. <laughs> yeah, man, stay in the fast lane. Coleman, run that fast lane. Run that fast lane. And it's not until, it's not until... And I'm going to tell you what, it's not until I can combat, combat it with something, I have to bring my mind under. I, I continuously work on me and my heart. Now I know. But let me, let me finish. I will finish this. Good. Instead, Christians are instructed to strive for contentment in all things, trusting in God to prove what is needed in his good name. Guarding against a complaining spirit and a cultivating a spirit of gratitude and trust is the second step towards guarding your heart. Be content. My God. I was very upset with President Trump. I didn't like it. Now I don't even care. I'm serious. I done already resolved. I done already resolved. They going to do what they do. And I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to leave it alone. As much as I dislike it, I love God. I just, you know what, the bottom line is put in God's hands. You, you got to take care of this. It ain't my problem. Oh, God, it ain't my problem. No. And last, con- congestive heart failure. 
is an ability is the inability of the heart to successfully pump blood through the body due to weakness within its walls. Congestive heart failures can result from hypertension, high blood, high blood pressure. I have, I, I don't know, I got it from the Simmons. That pig, all that pig they eat, you know, pig eating jokers, chitlins and stuff. <laughs> I had high blood as a young man. I was 30-something years old when I had blood. Now my kids got it. Michelle, James, Joe. Julius has it, but he won't admit it. <laughs> he said, I ain't claiming it, Dad. Deb said, no, I'll keep rubbing his head. He'll be okay. If the doctor tells you you got high blood pressure and you don't take your medicine, you're not smart. You're going to die young. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to die young. Because it'll sneak up on you. Hypertension ain't no joke. And the thing of it is, you don't really feel, when you start feeling your blood pressure high, it's high. It's crazy high. Peg, you don't have high blood, do you? It's, it's, see, she got, it's a Simmons thing. I take my blood pressure re religiously. I got a handful of pills. I suck them down every morning. Religiously. But but let me let me go. How about uh mike mycocardial infractions, heart attack, an abnormal enlargement of the heart. I only had an angina attack, never had a heart attack. It came close. Anybody ever had a heart attack? There we go. There we go. And say for the grace of God, you're still here. Say for the grace of God. The spiritual e equivalent, the spiritual equivalent, my God, this is deep. Oh, the spiritual equivalent of a, car, a congestive heart failure. Oh, John, I've had many of these. Is anger. Oh, given into temptation. And pride. And pride. Anger acts like a poison on the body. Anger acts like a poison on the body, both physically and spiritually. Have you ever got so mad you see blood, red? I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. I've seen people, I was in the Philippines. The joker was high and mad. He was high and mad. It's, it's bad, it's bad, high. A, 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 one, a Filipino, a Filipino uh, police officer stuck his gun in his mouth. I was, I, I, well, you know, I ain't lying. I'm standing here on holy ground. I'm not going to lie about that. He's still talking junk. Shoot me. I'm like, are you, I'm mad? <laughs> I was with a group of jokers. They're just as nutty as a fruitcake. He talk, had the gun in his mouth. Shoot me. I'm like, The police officer said he got to be crazy. Because they'll kill you there. They don't, they'll kill you. What are they going to do? Had the gun in his mouth. Kill, shoot me. I don't give a so and so. I'm like, I know I got to change my association. <laughs> Have you ever known when you got to change your association? <laughs> I'm out of this. Cancel me out. Anger, beating folk, men beating women. I've seen men beat women so bad that it makes you want to just, ain't better not do it now, I'm a grown man. I, I'm not a fighter, but I sure enough try to pull you off of it. No, no, I got to stop that because I know some women, that tell you, they curse me out for pulling them off of them. So I better leave folk alone. I'll call 911, leave it alone. I just keep walking. Leave it alone. People beating children, unmerciful. Beating children, angry, mad. Ha! Ah! Uh, the spirituality and makes a believer more vulnerable to the temptation to hurt others in other actions and words. You can kill a person with your mouth. Talking about. We 
as church folk, we got, you know, we are, we're really unique at the way we talk. We ain't really talking about you. We just killing you. I don't want to talk about you. I want to kill you. Talk about one another. Run one another down. It's just, uh, you know, it's just better just go right to their face and tell them, you know what? I ain't going to talk about you. I'm going to talk to you. Not about you, to you. I'd rather you come and talk to me than about me, literally. Because when you sow seeds of discord, it grows. If you can bring it right to me, we can both beat that seed up. Is that good? Now look at this here, temptation, anger. And get rid of temptation to hurt others with our actions and words. All bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every other uh, forms of malice. And that's what I told the young lady. I said, you're trying to sow seeds of discord. When you talk about a person, if I was to talk about Tracy to, to D, I'm sowing a seed of discord. And what, I, what I'm doing, I'm sowing that into him. And if he don't watch it, it'll grow. I know people that, that I did not really think favorable of, didn't know them. But because somebody sowed that seed in me, now it's done grown. And now it's, it's in me. That's why you got to be careful what you put out in you. Don't let people just dump their stuff in you. I don't care who you are. I'll listen to the pastor. He can talk about them because he's, no, I can't. And if I do it, tell me. Pastor, stop talking about so-and-so. What am I going to do? Repent. Okay, be kind and compassionate one to the other, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. I'm done, and I went far, a lot further than I thought. <clears throat> I got too many pages there, I'm like President Trump. Like President Trump. No, I'm done, son. How many in here will agree with me? Pastor Simmons, I need to guard my heart. I want to, how many will touch and agree with me straight up and say, you know what, Pastor Simmons? No, Abba. I like that, Abba. What's that? How's that? Abba. I belong to you. Yeah, I like that, Abba. Yeah, man. At first, I thought you was calling me, Wes. I had to stop. Abba, hey! No. Oh, that's not me. <laughs> I love it. I love it, boy. Yeah, yeah I, I love it, man. That's good. How many want to touch and agree with me on that? I mean, straight up saying, man, I, I need that. I, I need that, Simmons. I really do. Jimmy, I need that. I'm going to touch and agree. I'm, I'm going to step down off this high ground and touch and agree with you all. I'm going to guard my heart. My heart. My heart. And I mean, there's some issues out of this, Joker boy. If you stand in need of prayer for anything that you know that God wants to touch and agree, I want to touch and agree with you. Wherever two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing, anything here on earth, God says, Jesus gave us his word. He said, I'll do it. I'm standing in special need 